Now we're back on this one again. It's been a little bit of a frustration. Now I had this set of coils and this particular switch box along with that carburetor on the motor over there that ran that has a scuffed piston. So I put it back on this motor. I had this one on this motor to begin with. It gets sparked, but it just backfires. It's way out of time. So the reasons that can be is somewhere a problem with the crank and the pin location relative to the firing and the timing. That's possible, but not likely. Bad trigger. That's possible, maybe. You know, see how that trigger advances. That's what that's controlled by your your throttle. And it opens up a little bit. And what that does is advance the timing to a certain point. It has to be pretty far out of whack for it to backfire. So then I just swapped the plugs, just swapped the plug wires, and it still backfired. So it's like 90 degrees out of phase at least. So something's wrong. I know this works, and these two work because they were on a running motor. You saw that in the video. Just not this running motor. So, I don't know if it's possible that the uh, crank on these was different or something like that. But this looks like it was the original ignition system for this motor. It matches up with the, uh, the serial number. So I'm just going to swap the entire ignition system over from the other motor and stick it on here and see if it does the same thing. But, as you can tell, there was a little corrosion, which means that flywheel did not come off easy. So I had to rig up a puller to get that off. And this is what it looked like. Where I took out four of the screws for that little crown that engages the pull start. And uh, this puller was actually made at Big Pin Tool Room back in 1986 or 87, that time period. And uh, there was a fellow named well, I'm not going to tell you his name. He might still be there. But uh, he was in charge of the tool room and all the things related. And I was selling CAD CAM systems to him at the time and doing customer support. And when I was working on Mercury Outboards, I needed a puller like this for this very reason. And they made one and somewhere on it, it's an actual part number. Which is pretty funny. So I guess I have to go over to the other motor and replicate this. So I guess this video is going to be about pulling flywheels off of 20 horse Mercury's. Kind of get it some semblance of even. And then once you get it there, get the impact driver. That's it. Oh. So let's go see what we got. I'm going to take all of it. So just those screws. I think this is all loose. I'll pick it up and out of there because I know this was working. all of it right there. All right, let's go put it on the other one. All right, let me take this one off. One, two, got 
short ones over here, two short screws on this side. And then you got one right here. And one right here. And that should all come off. I have to take the uh, grounding wire here as well. I guess I better disconnect these. This one looks a little bit different than the other one. Just keep swapping parts and sooner or later we'll figure out why it's not running. I hate mechanic in that way, but sometimes that's the only way. All right, so let's see if we can start by putting the other one on. A little bit different. It's just a little bit different. And we'll set the other one on top. There we go. Two short screws. I'll just get them started right here. And you got the longer ones. Crank them in there pretty good. And I'm going to set the flywheel on there and zap it home and see if we have a, a running motor. Wouldn't that be cool, finally? Okay. All right. Make sure these are plugged into the right ones. Got a white on white and brown on brown. Before I go crazy, I just want to make sure I have a running motor. So let me set the flywheel on top of that and then put it back together and see if I got a running motor. Just check this real quick. Flywheel goes on. QA is right this side. And we wrap that on there with the impact driver. And call it good. that's tight enough and now I had pulled a couple of those little 7 16 out the top so let me run them right back in and then I can put the
pull start and all that together. One of the reasons I went for all this exercise is to change over to the newer style cover where basically it hooks in the back and then uh, and then clips down like that. I think the first thing I want to do before I get crazy is just see if I have any spark. That would be a good place to start, right? And while I'm at it, I think I'm going to put in new spark plugs. is showing. I got a lot of compression so I better pull that one right out. It's got good compression. All right. That one has spark. Let's try the other one. Hot spark. They both have hot spark. Now the question is, is a spark happening at the right time for whoever this motor is? Did it break a crank or does it have a busted reed valve or something like that which negates all this good stuff on the ignition system? I'm going to find out in a couple minutes here. I better put my tools away, get the water going, and see if I've got a motor that runs. Yet again, I found out that you got to be kind of careful with those monkey ears. If they don't seal, you'll think you have a pump problem, and you really don't. It's just not uh, sealing and getting water into the pump. Now I happen to know that I just finished putting a pump in that one, so I wasn't worried about it. But So I guess what we need to do is the little place, the little telltale here is all plugged up, so i got to unplug it. Getting good water flow. So I got to unplug the telltale and I have to shrink wrap these wires right here. And then I think we do have a running motor. Take this boat out and go somewhere with it tomorrow. <laughs> 